possible and if it is not happening there is something very seriously wrong with our governance structure this is my opinion on it do is both the people and the government you yeah, of course government government is part of the people may i mean uh, if i am electing a government so i am contributing towards that either resolution or the problem so i am part of the problem and uh, when you become in the government and i have landed that support to you so it means the two of us have brought it to the tango mr prime minister why do we always go into frenzy and last minute coping mechanisms shut down the schools and do this and that why can't we be like beijing and control this issue i mean crop burning is one of the prescriptions but then there is no law enforcement you go on the motor when people are doing it without any fear of repercussions or them being caught so what do you have to say about that i i i completely agree with you i mean uh, the enforcement is one of the challenges as you have identified yourself in your question uh the poor enforcement is part of the problem of the governance in this country there are laws uh they exist but if he goes and tries to implement and and apprehend that man you would start agitating that his rights are being violated and there is a group of rights emerge in this country wherever the law enforcement goes for the enforcement there are occasions on which the law enforcement also uh are compliant uh, for multiple reasons financial mismanagement few others political influence they are there but on on the other hand society also has a tendency to stop enforcement so so we are living in this milieu uh poor uh, development and capacity building of the law enforcement agencies lack of ethos i mean if you go and and observe your bureaucracy who has to implement you will be surprised the kind of a value system probably they personally hold that is appalling that is shocking that is disappointing to see the to say the least uh we have a structure of a bureaucracy which does not have a sense of identity that what was the ottoman empire the janissaries were the most committed group which ensured the structure of the empire and those ottomans were able to expand their good or bad agenda till the uh, up till eastern europe primarily because of the janissaries uh, if you go and see the structure of any nation state empire or anywhere in the in in the documented history there is a structure of the bureau who takes and uh, furthers and forwards the agenda which is linked to that identity in our case it's missing it is unfortunately missing uh, you don't know who they are enforcing the laws for or they themselves are pretty much confused so there is a structural issue at the level of the enforcement which needs some radical changes in my opinion whether somebody does that or doesn't you need a civil structure reforms until unless you don't do that from the burning of the crop up till uh, allowing a vehicle on the motorway which is not fit environmentally are both part of the challenge so we we need to address that as soon as possible i don't know whether this policeman agree with it but this is my opinion but then you mentioned radical change who will bring it and how like what is the prescription will we keep dying our know. lungs are practically collapsing so yeah, what is the prescription I, radical changes are required this is all i can say Hallelujah. by whom let's find the noun let's find the uh, person or persons that. in the time they are placed somewhere in the future if somebody can peek in the future they will know it but i am still pessimistic i haven't found the answer mr prime minister give us a now well this is my art to evade answers you know it's not <laughs> the art to give all the answers well mr prime minister now coming to some serious questions you recently banned all the celebrations on new year's eve uh in solidarity with the palestinians 
while it was well intended mr prime minister it raised two questions a about law enforcement and b about the global image of pakistan i mean for the first one celebrations still took place in the absence of law for the global image i mean pakistan the only muslim nuclear powered country has now gone to a status that when generations are being literally wiped out this is what we are doing banning fireworks what do you have to say about that uh first of all there was a lot of criticism also and there was a lot of appreciation behind this decision so so there is a mix of both there is a section of society which wanted to celebrate the new year and down the line after 100 years they wanted to be document, documented as someone on that particular second 12 o'clock one second dancing and having festivity and so on and so forth so, so they are very very critical of of this decision and i don't mind of the criticism our intention first was to highlight that in the global community particularly on the western hemisphere that there is a nation of 240 million people who officially has distanced itself from the festivity because of the kind of the genocide which is being committed by this apartheid uh, state of israel which is brutal which has applied a uh, disproportionate force uh, whose existence is also at question but they are uh expressing this brutal uh are displaying the, the force of this brutality in an a very uh, with impunity so what are our options one do we go to the war yes i am an interim prime minister do you expect me to take the 240 million people to the war probably probably a nuclear war so you are very quite serious people and raising a very serious question to me think about it have a grand assembly mull over it i can't alone take such a big decision it's huge it's big should we go to war i mean in my personal opinion i am a very aggressive and a, and a jingoistic person maybe i would say yes but don't listen to me war has implications war is not a joke what we have done we have exploited the forum of oic we have exploited other international forums we have been engaging with western diplomats particularly the us diplomats brits europeans and clearly enunciating them telling them that if such behavior continues it would be responsible for radicalizing the entire 1.4 billion muslim population throughout the globe within west and over here middle east north africa anywhere so we are trying the 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 immediate objective is that somehow that we stop this senseless war and create a humanitarian corridor this is the kind of a message which the military leadership recently took the united states and we were quite clear in our opposition and our condemnation and our commitment towards palestinians is it is it why is on this occasion to initiate a war and who are you me and anyone else who feel so passionate about palestine and and its cause uh we have not lost a finger in this war this single finger there 9000 children have been killed let them decide there is no need to be heroic over here in this peaceful cozy environment and just thinking that oh i'm so heroic that because i stand with the oppressed one it's very good it's very good but they are the one who are suffering they are the one who are facing let's take this question first to them 
that whether they are willing to take this war and in which direction over here they are calling conferences and seminars and speaking with all their rhetorics I completely understand I am more radical than all these so-called people who play on these rhetorics but I try to control my my populist tendency these are very serious is there any idea to all of them that what is the, my, the situation my of populist populist tendency. tendency these are very serious is there any idea that what is the the situation of Zionism what is the link to it हमेशा खुशी में दह 